I'm Alex Juhas, and I'm going to be discussing the final scene of Agnes Varda's final film, Faces Places, which she directed with JR and which was nominated for an Academy Award months before she passed at the age of 90. Ça fait peur, la mort, toi, ou pas du tout? Je crois pas. J'y pense beaucoup. Je ne crois pas que j'ai peur, mais c'est parce que ce sera le dernier moment. J'ai bien envie, moi, déjà, d'y être. Ah bon, pourquoi ben, Parce que ce sera fini. I think it's important to start by saying Agnes Varda is one of the most important French filmmakers who ever lived and is known as such in France and may not be as well known in the United States. And that has a lot to do with the sexism that has underwritten the history of film, who has made film, who studies film, who talks about film, and what films are appreciated. Perhaps you don't know that Agnes Varda's first film, La Pointe Courte, and I'm not a French film scholar, so my pronunciation may be wrong, which was made in 1955, preceded two of the most important traditions in film history many years before those were recognized. A French term is avant la lettre. It's a kind of work that happens before the term occurs. She is now understood to have made the first French New Way film, also known as the Nouvelle Vague. This film was in 1955. Tu vois, c'est ici la pointe courte. Tu m'en as parlé si souvent. Contemporaries Jean Luc Godard, her husband Jacques Demy, don't make films that are understood as the beginning of the French New Wave until several years after. Now, she was involved in that scene. The film that she references in the scene that I've quoted for you is something that she made with Jean Luc Godard before he becomes famous. <laughs> She also made her first film, La Pointe Courte, 1955, before Cinema Verité is named Cinema Verité. Jean Rouge and Ed Edgar Morin make Chronicle of a Summer in 1961, one of the most important uh, documentary films ever made. Pourquoi vous êtes malheureux, monsieur? Parce que je suis trop vieux. C'est vrai? Oui, 79 ans. But she's making movies three, four, five years beforehand. In France, her place in cinema has been understood, I think less so in the United States. So I'm very excited to introduce her to viewers as someone who has had a hand in the invention and perfection of certain kinds of filmmaking from the beginning. Agnes Varda coined the term cinecriture, which means cine writing, to talk about what she refined and invented as a filmmaker starting with her first film in 1955 until this last film that we're going to look at, which she made just months before she died. When she talks about cinecriture, cine writing, she using her own language to talk about something that you all, again, might be more familiar with, which is the cinema d'auteur, auteur cinema, cinema that has the hand of its maker as if the filmmaker is writing with a pen, as if the filmmaker has a unique and defined and irregular and idiosyncratic style, which when the French New Wave was invented, when Italian New Realism was invented, was in opposition to Hollywood filmmaking, studio style filmmaking, where the whole point was that it just looked as good as the studio. I got a big job on hand and I figured you in on the deal. There you are, Deputy Sheriff Sonora Joe. <laughs> Don't you try to make a fool out of me! This is very serious business, and I'm counting on your help. <laughs> Stick them up, boys. Stick them up. Agnes Varda and her contemporaries who are inventing the French New Wave, the Nouvelle Vague, are looking at Hollywood films and seeing that some directors have a unique style that rises above the flattening of the studio system and they invent the word cinema d'auteur and they start to think about the fact that the director has a unique writing style. Alexandre Astruc called that camera stylo. It's like you're making film as if it's a pen. So Agnes Barda says that she's engaged in cine creature and that's what I'd like to talk about, cine writing. And she says 
that she strives to achieve at every level of production a unique vision that's in the screenplay, in shooting, in the script itself, casting, location, the position and movement of the camera, and the rhythm of editing. And that is absolutely true across her body of film. Je me souviens pendant que je vis. What's interesting about Agnes Varda is that she works in both documentary and narrative filmmaking across a very long and very busy career in filmmaking. One of the things that she's very well known for and something that I particularly appreciate is that she's blurring the lines between documentary and narrative filmmaking across all of those films. And that's something we'll talk about in relationship to this scene. Who is he Défier la structure narrative de ton propre film. And something that happens in the French New Wave and also in Italian neorealism, even though those are understood as narrative filmmaking traditions, you have people shooting in real locations with non-professional actors and semi-improvisational styles. And again, as someone who's inventing that tradition, in fact, one might say invented it, that blurring of what is scripted and what is improvised, what is acted and what is lived, what is real and what is imagined. Those are important issues that she will deal with across her career. So I'm going to suggest that this film faces places, represents everything that Varda has done in a very long and very fruitful career, and that the last scene is a perfect realization of a lot of that. And what I love the most and what I feel the most, now being old, that some pieces of the puzzle are missing. 